Hey, uh, this episode of Social Jello, I'm going to be interviewing Tatsuki Nakata, uh, rep for TEDx. TEDx is a uh, expansion from the show of TED Talks, and um, they kind of put together local communities and to the larger TED Talk network. It's a great show coming up. Um, but as always, this episode of Social Jello is brought to you by Blueberry. Blueberry uh, brings you a great host if you have pod a podcast or if you're a DJ. It's a great spot to help you promote your podcast or web service through their website at www.blueberry.com. Uh, let me check that out real quick. Um, blueberry, blueberry. Um, give me a sec. Yes, that is www.blueberry.com. You can check it out there. That's uh, B L U B R R Y for you. Check it out. And um, also, it's brought to you by the Kobe Fight Network. If you want to come out and do some martial arts every Sunday at the OG Sports Center, me, along with some other martial artists, get together and share knowledge from Brazilian no Jiu Jitsu to kickboxing to stand up to open glove karate. Come on out. Learn something, have fun. Martial artists from all sorts of backgrounds and experiences. So if you're out into Japan, every time I'm done with a fucking podcast, my mouth is shit. All right, if you're out in the Jap, in the <laughs> if you're in the Kansai area of Japan, we welcome you to train with us. That is www.gobefighting-gobe-fighting.net. You see it there. All right, y'all. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to the Social Jello with Angelo show. Um, today, I'm here with uh, Tatsuki Nakata. Hi. Hi. I'm Tatsuki. Thank you for coming out, Tatsuki. I'm really, really glad to come here. Well, I'm happy to have you on the show. Um... So today we're going to be going over, as usual, a lot of different topics. If this is your first Social Jello episode, then you'll know that I jump around everywhere. Um, but uh, either way, I, I met Tatsuki last week, and he had a really interesting background, and he's doing some pretty cool stuff out here in Japan. So um, I figured I'd bring in another guest and kind of talk about different stuff. Right before we started rolling the cameras, you asked me about... Uh, you were asking me about how long I've been in Japan mm -hmm. and and you asked me about my experience teaching English yeah and what is a really di different thing that between America and Japan the culture and tradition oh wow <laughs> that's a big question <laughs> <laughs> no comment no I'm just kidding <laughs> no 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 that's fine yeah yeah no I think um yeah there's a lot there's a lot of big there's a lot of cultural differences um like I was saying earlier um one of the things that uh, that really that was kind of uh, that was one of the biggest challenges for me mm -hmm. was the fact that when I came out here I didn't know any Japanese yeah. so it became it was well I knew some Japanese I actually studied Japanese for one year at the university mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to communicate I can communicate with professors or yeah. maybe other Japanese students mm -hmm. But I didn't know how to talk to someone like on the street, if yeah, you will. Like really, like oral communication. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was all textbook, so yeah. I, I I didn't know. Uh, Just formal, like. Yeah, context. formal Japanese. So like when I would, people would talk to me. I didn't understand any type of casual Japanese. Anything that came at me that like, oh, out here they speak a dialect called Kansai Bang. Yeah, Kansai Bang, and S here is the Banshu Bang. Yeah, yeah, and, and here really is Banshu Bang. Yeah, yeah, which is a different dialect. So I really, ha I, my, my, my first challenge that I encountered is I didn't, I didn't understand half the words that people were using to talk yeah. to me. And then when I did respond, I was super nervous, and I would respond in very formal Japanese, mm -hmm. which made the people that were talking to me not sure how to communicate with me. They're yeah. like, oh, he's speaking really formal Japanese. So it, it created more of a, of, a, of a barrier. Of course, now everything's cool. Like... <laughs> I've learned enough Japanese to, to communicate and, and make closer relationships with the people and my, and my clients. But yeah, that was that was one of my biggest challenges. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, so, 
I guess um just just to kind of get started. So Tatsuki, you 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 were a representative mm-hmm. for TED Talks. TED Talks. Um, at Kyoto University. Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. Of Foreign Studies. Foreign Studies. Studies. All right. I guess my first question for you is how how did uh how did that start? How did you get that? How did you end up in that position? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, the I contact different thing. And the <laughs> reason why I started really this that is studying English really seriously is one of the really biggest reason. It was TEDx. TED oh, Talks. really? Yeah, but like, my I I wanted participating the TEDx and TED Talks. But I didn't have a chance because you're really, really famous. But yeah. truth be told, I my university it started already the before I entered my university. Mm-hmm. So, but f- my friend invited me, and I was really interested in that. So, I actually joined. Oh, that's really and cool. but it, it was really difficult because there are a lot of thing and organize, and we have to a lot of how to say, prepare to support people, to support speaker, and we have to know a lot of knowledge, like an information or how to do, how to promote, how to share the information, how to know a lot of people. So it was really difficult, but um, how to say, the, uh, the origin I started the firstly I contact the people that who are who are member of the Terex Kyoto. Mm. The er, every time is like this. So every time I am really interested in the after I act soon. So oh, okay. so I actually contacted the not face to face, I sent a message to the one guy. The who or maybe he's Really, he's really high. I'd say he's high up in the in the yeah. TED Talks yeah, community. Yeah, and for for the um, like if I uh, if I check, okay, yeah, the TEDx program. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then TEDx is, and just to let you kind of know about what TEDx is. It um it supports independent organizers who want to create a TED like event in their own community. Yeah. And um what that does is uh you know you have the you have the bigger network of TED Talks and then TEDx has become uh has become a, a local community that goes into different parts that that are connected to the larger mm-hmm. the larger community of TED Talks, right? Yeah. And so when it comes to 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 TEDx or, or, or when, you're, when you're looking at TEDx and the people you're con- contacting mm-hmm. um, are they Japanese? Yeah they're both Japanese in both of them they're Japanese and American not a lot of people okay. not only Japanese oh really so, yeah. so it's kind of an international community international and this was this is on um, this is in at Kyoto University? Kyoto University, yeah, my university, Kyoto University of course. And then my university, they, they even though the Japanese, they have to, maybe they should speak in English. They speak, yeah, in English and they, yeah, in English. So they, me, mm, the team and also the speaker, they have to prepare a lot. They have to practice a lot. But it was really, really hard. The explaining mm. and yeah, certain and information in English. And I don't mean to interrupt you. Just one more thing for for some of my listeners that don't know about what Kyoto University is. For on on the in in the global in U.S. News, mm-hmm. um, the website of usnews.com, and for a global score as far as the top universities in Japan. No, um, it isn't my university. My university is other. Kyoto Gaikoku Ah. Sorry, I I don't have, I have not really high level of my university. Is this one? K- 
Kyoto University of Foreign Studies is another university. Ah, oh, <laughs> so Sorry. Kyoto. Yeah, but in France, university. so I'm from Kyoto, so the people so think like studies. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I found it. Yeah, this one. Well, it's still a good ranking university, though. I don't know. <laughs> No, it's not. It's not like a Harvard, but it's still a pretty good university. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> but I, I, if it's possible, I want to say I'm from Kyoto University. It's, yeah, it's second. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, it's really second. Yeah, it's treated really as a second, like Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. studies. That's yeah. something I, I need to clarify. He's from Kyoto University, but the TEDx program is to the Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. Yeah, but it's my university. It's it's not Kyoto, Kyoto University, university no. Kyoto University of Foreign Studies, but um. That's still great. I mean, TEDx is still a really huge organization. Yeah. And, um, I mean, a, a lot of people get caught up in, like, being a part of a big university. Me, personally, I went I went to uh, I went to CSU, which is California State University. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went through a division called CSUSM, which is not the biggest, not the biggest number one Cal State program that they have. Mm-hmm. But um, but it's the same education, so it, I think that's just that's just um, elitist talk, in my opinion. Yeah. But so you were saying you contact your your job is to contact the speakers. The speaker and let's say we make the environment really good environment to speaker. That we have to we just support we the everyone make the TEDx not speak not only speaker, so we're. So we have maybe I I forgot but we have more than five team. Yeah, so organizer and creator, illustrator or something. So everyone make TED talk. Cool. So cool. I we use really cool. And the speakers are um the speakers come from around the world. Uh, yeah, around from the different world. backgrounds. Yeah, actually. So they are not only you know better they are like so president the how to say the president of Kyoto city ah uh, the mayor the mayor the, the last year mayor yeah he is the Kyoto he's the mayor of Kyoto oh city. cool if you want you can turn the screen that way yeah they can, they can right. see it too if it's, I know it's a bit small but yeah, right there so you, you can kind of see if you can see the screen oh for the for those of you listening right now he he put his computer and he's just kind of looking at at the at TEDx Kyoto. Yeah. Kyoto You like? His is in in, in Japanese. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, all right. So yeah. Yeah, 2015. So yeah, for the for my listeners, yeah, there's a. I'm looking at here at the at the mayor of Kyoto, Dai Daisuke. Daisaku, Daisaku Kodo, Kadokawa. Kadokawa. Yeah, sorry. Kadokawa san. Kadokawa san. <laughs> from uh, the mayor of Kadokawa Kyoto. Mayor. And for some of you that don't know where Kyoto is, um, Kyoto is one of the largest uh, tourist attractions in Japan mm-hmm. because of all its temples. It yeah. is, uh, it's one of the. Before. I forgot what era. Was it the Meiji period? At one point, Kyoto used to be the capital of Japan before Tokyo. A long, long, long time ago. Until no Meiji, from since Edo. Edo. Edo, then they moved to Tokyo, the capital. They're ah. from Kyoto, so. Jomo yayo. Yeah. So when I was, the primary school, primary student, and just everyone have to know Jomo yayo like period. Yeah, and then like just to kind of keep up, cause I know this, cause I'm kind of a yeah. a samurai geek, but like, <laughs> so so I've always I've always been really interested in like the Edo period and and the Tokugawa shogunate and like that transition between uh, Japan becoming westernized, yeah, and a little after the Civil War, how it kind of unified and that was part mm-hmm. of it. But uh, for Japanese history, it's broken up into different periods because of how old Japan is. And he's actually talking about the Edo period, which was between uh, the 16th century and a little before the 19th mm-hmm. century, 1603 to 1868, yeah. to kind of give you some historical perspective of what we're talking about. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, during the Edo period is when you said they moved the capital of Japan 
Yeah, it's Azuchi Azuchi Momoya, they're like Oda Nobunaga, really famous in the samurai. And yeah, Hideyoshi. Yeah, yeah. And the Ieyasu, the, he was, when he was born, the period was Azuchi Momoyama, but after the, he moved, the, he met Edo. Oh, okay, so, so once, once that, that, what was his name again? Sorry. Ieyasu. 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 And he was a emperor or he was a samurai? He, both. He was the emperor sam- yeah, emperor samurai. He was an emperor and a samurai. But well, he was one of the emperors. Because yeah. right, there's a difference between the emperors, right, and your shogunate. Like Tokugawa was a shogunate. Yeah. Right? Uh, so he's, yeah, a, he's a samurai shogun. So it's a. It's a little different from the really complicated from the t- from the title of an emperor. So he was one of the former emperors. Once that emperor was born, it, or once that emperor became into power, mm-hmm. the Edo period started. Yes, and that's that's that, that's the that's what he's trying to get you at. If you ever really want to learn something really cool, look up Japan's <laughs> history on Wikipedia. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, about the samurai and and its history and yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Um, Do you know samurai sauce in France? There are a lot of kebab, and we can add the sam. There are samurai sauce in, in the ketchup. No, 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 in France. In France, yeah, in sauce, brush brush. It means white sauce, mm-hmm. white sauce, ketchup, and Mexican maybe. And the samurai samurai sauce is really spicy. Samurai, oh, yeah. samurai sauce. Samurai sauce. Yeah. sauce. <laughs> ah, no, I've never had samurai sauce. <laughs> can't, can't say that I have. <laughs> yeah. So, I, mm-hmm. so kind of going back. Um, I forgot how we ended up here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like I said, this is how my show works. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, so yeah, Kyoto. 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 That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyoto. So <laughs> you see how? No, not, no, no problem. But you see, and I don't mind. Like, yeah. So again, if this is your first Social Jello episode, right? It's called Social Jello mm-hmm. because um, do you know? Like, there's a product. There's a product called Jello, uh, and it, it it's a type of like Jello. Je- I think in Japanese they say jelly. A zeri, yeah, right. Jero, jero. And this whole concept that like you can have different flavors, it's always the same. Mm-hmm. It looks the same, but there's always different things that you can do with it. It makes any shape. Mm. So that's the concept of my show. Like ah, this idea that I I, I the, there are a lot of different topics. Yeah, I, I mix it up. It ah. it moves. It molds. It changes. So we can call it Jello. Yeah, that's so what I, I call it, yeah the show the show is social Jello with Angelo, Jello. right? And that's Angelo. Yeah, Angelo. Angelo. So social Jello with Angelo because I'm always like ah, that's oh, that's really me. Cool. So like so yeah, if, if if this is your first episode of Social Jello, um, then um, then you know then now you know this is how my show works. I kind of jump around between topics. If this is not your first episode of Social Jello, then you already know what's what what I'm all about and how I how I how I roll. Mm-hmm. So, um, so dude, you were saying that, so like we were, we were just catching up. So you, you go to Kyoto Universities of Foreign Studies. Mm-hmm. Um, your job is to contact these TED Talks yeah. representatives. Have you ever spoken on the show? Or is that something, have you ever spoken on, on the TED Talk show? Or do you just do I know. Yeah. Is it something you'd like to do? Yeah, but I want to be a teacher. Yeah. yeah. What, um, what is, uh... You were saying I know I know you said you studied English. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you studied French. French and business. And you studied business. And you were telling me that you have a you have a side project. Yes, yeah, my side project is called my homepage. It's called La Sigoni. La si- La Sigoni. La Sigoni. And then it's in French. For um for you people that are watching. I'm going to put uh I'm going to put the website here here or here I as think. always. And um and I'll edit I'll edit the uh website on the on the video oh, okay. later yeah where okay. they can see it. And then um and for you listeners it's a uh, la sigogne which is L A C I G O G N E yeah and um and it's on Facebook. So yeah. if you want to check out Facebook and uh, and search L A C I G O G N E. You can check it out there. I, I'm also gonna link it on my social Jello with Angelo Facebook Thanks. page along with my website. So check it out there too as well. So what what's your page all about, man? So it's like I I was born not here not Kasai. Now I was born 
Tajima. The t- Tajima is the part, north part of Hyogo.、Mm-hmm. So, the Tajima is the region. And I was born in Toyokashi. Twi- Toyokashi is one of the c i t i e the biggest city in Tajima. So, in Tajima, there are a lot of hot springs. And, and hot springs is、uh, really famous. Yeah, at hot springs, and they have a sea and the mountain. There where we can play snowboarding, ski. So, there are a lot of, a lot, a lot of things,、uh, activities that, that we can see. Dude, so Tajima is actually near Kyotengo, right? Yeah, near Kyotengo.、Uh, which is also near Kumihama Bay. Ah, yeah, here is Kyoto, so yeah, here. Yeah, so for you,、uh, for, for my listeners and also my viewers,、mm-hmm. uh, the, if, if you've seen any of my surfing videos that I've posted,、um, I've, I've actually done a few videos that I'm actually in, I, I've taken a lot of people to Totori and also the Kumihama Bay. Yes. Because it's a really great surf spot during the winter.、Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, for winter surfing. Yeah, so the Tajima, the, the reason why I started this project and I made this homepage, and I have also the homepage, Welcome to Tajima, but I didn't finish it, make it. Oh, you're still constructing、yeah. the, the yes. page? Yes. So, because there are a lot of people who are the Asian people. And the elderly people, they have a lot of monuments and the place like the mountain or sea or hot spring. And the food is really great. They have crabs.、Mm. They have great crabs. And yeah, it's really nice. But the, the problem is the population, the people, the tendency, the people, how do you say, the son or daughter, the after the They graduate university or graduate high school. They move to Osaka or big city, or Osaka or Tokyo or Kyoto. So, yeah, so I, <laughs> I really like Tajima. And I, I want to introduce a lot of information. I want to share the information. So. And what you're mentioning right now about the.、Uh The population issue, yeah, that, what you're talking about, the population issue in Japan, yeah,、um, kind of goes back to a, a few different things. But right now, there's a、um, life expectancy keeps going up.、Mm-hmm. And、um, there, there's, since 2011, the population in Japan started to decline. Yeah. And、um, this has created a really big problem because、um, as. As people are getting older, there's, there, there's the next generation, there, there's a gap between the next generation being、mm-hmm. able to come into the workforce、yeah. and support the economy.、Uh, and then the other, the other phenomenon that it's leading towards is this trend where, like you said, you have these small farming towns、mm-hmm. yeah. where there's no jobs essentially because all the jobs have gone to the city.、Mm. Like you said, Tokyo, Kyoto,、yes. Osaka, or Kobe. They, they go to the big cities, and what's happening is these small towns are becoming like desert towns. Like, people, everybody moves out,、yes. and there's no young people to take care of the,、yeah. the town. So, your project is you're, you're kind of trying to promote the small town of Tajima、mm-hmm. to try to、um, keep it from dying, essentially. Yeah. So, the in the future that I want to introduce here, the Kasai, but Kasai really, really love here. I grew up here. So. Yeah. What are some of the things that,、uh, that you feel are people would be like, especially like people from people that watch my show come from the United States,、mm-hmm. a lot of them? Oh.、Um, <clears throat> so, what, what are some of the things that are in Tajima that they might be interested in seeing? Interesting. Yeah.、Like uh, is there any like sightseeing spots or? Yeah, sightseeing. So, Kinosaki Onsen. Oh, Kinosaki. Kinosaki Onsen, yeah. That's Tajima. Yeah, that's Tajima. Yeah, 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 I didn't know that. Kinoseki Onsen or Hachikite. Hachikite is a mountain. So every winter they, they have a lot of snow. Is there any, is there any snowboard resorts? Snowboard, yeah.、Oh, actually,、okay. I play snowboarding. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. cool. And, and after the sea. No, actually, I, the, we can do snorkeling, and we can do canoe or wakeboarding、oh, really? in the sea. Cool, cool. And that's, that would be in which beach? Kyotengo or?、Uh, no, uh, Takeno. Takeno Beach. Oh, Takeno Beach. Takeno Beach.、Oh, right. 
Alright. Hekeno Beach, maybe two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. They have really big festival. They have fireworks. Oh, it cool. It was amazing, yeah. So, so it seems like, oh yeah, that's a pretty cool looking beach. Yeah, for, um, for, you, for my listeners, like I'm looking at some of the... In the words, they don't have sharks. Yeah, yeah, that's another cool thing. Right? There's, no, there's no, uh, there's no sharks in, in Japan. But yeah, the the water is really clear. And, yeah, and the, like, and the beaches look or like white sandy beaches. Really looks like a great place to go. Thank you. Um. So yeah, they have kayaking. Um. Like he said, during the winter, they have uh they have a lot of ski resorts to go snowboarding. And you know, I know a lot of people when they come out to Japan, they always go to these the same spots. Like, everyone wants for snowboarding. Every every foreigner wants to go to uh, to Hokkaido. Hokkaido or right? Nagano. Or Nagano. Yeah. And then like, and then for surfing, everybody always goes to Chiba. But uh, what yeah. what what people don't really get is that Japan, like in those spots near the city, it is fucking crowded. Like, there's a lot of fucking people. So like, if you want to go. If you end up going to those places, especially during tourist season, like, there's so many people that I feel like you really don't get to enjoy Japan as much as you can, as much as you would if you went to a, a not, a less popular area. Yeah. And, like, one of the things I loved about, like, when I came down here to, to the Kansai area and, um... Shirahama? And now, Shirahama. Wakayama, yeah. Wakayama. And then when I went, when I went snowboarding in, um... Oh, what's the name of that mountain? It was, uh... Nagano? Uh, no, it's actually near... It's in the same area that you're talking about. Um... Kanabe? Kanabe! Kanabe. Yes, yes. Kanabe. When I went snowboarding in Kanabe. That, um... That's a great spot. There's not a lot of people. Yeah. It's not very crowded. It um, even, even when I go surfing, like... When I go surfing in, um... In the Kumihama Bay area, and near this, this spot that you're showing uh -huh. here... There's, it's it's a great spot. There's not it's not super crowded, and you can still really enjoy some of the some of the more rural parts of Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, in Japan, that's like we maybe the tendency the people work a lot, people work a lot, and the weekend we want like the person really slowly, we don't hang out. You don't hang out. <laughs> hang out. But me. It's maybe no, I I really want to hang out hang out with my friend and go like see or that depends on season. But the yeah, Jap Japanese people is like this. Japanese people are like they don't want to hang out a lot. Yeah, well they're they're really busy, right? Like yeah. how how many hours how many hours do you think they work a week? How mm -hmm. many hours do you, do you from your experience have you right now you're you're in college, right? Uh -huh. And you're gonna finish. You're gonna start work soon. Yeah. Have any of your friends started working yet? Yeah. 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 How many hours do you think they work a week? F more than forty. More than forty? Would you say maybe fifty? Yeah. More than forty. Yeah, fifty. Is About fifty hours. Yeah, right? between forty. More than forty and. 50. Yeah. So essentially, it's considered normal to work overtime. Yeah. Working full, like. Working full time is not enough. Like everybody works overtime hours. Yeah, overtime. Over Everyone's working about fifty hours minimum. Minimum. Yeah. Minimum. Minute, so minute. when a lot of people work six day work weeks, they have one day off. Some people and now that was one. That was another. You asked me earlier what was one of the adjustments like. Yeah. When I came to Japan, what was some of the things that shocked me? Um, and um, well. To kind of, I'm gonna go back on that, but here, give me a quick sec. So yeah, like I was saying, that that question you asked me, one of the things that that really shocked me, the culture shock, some mm, of the culture yes. shocks, was um was the fast paced lifestyle. See, I, I came to Japan. Uh, I had always come to Japan when I visited. I visited on vacation, mm -hmm. so I erroneously got the impression that that Japan is is laid back and it's like an island, yeah. and I realized that. I was laid back. <laughs> I was like an island, <laughs> but Japan is actually very fast paced, yeah. and, and I, did, I didn't realize that till I moved out here. Because of course I come out here on vacation. Everyone's really nice. Everyone would everyone would always take time off, so that I can spend time with them. 
So essentially, everyone I saw was also on vacation, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how busy Japanese life could get till I moved out here. And like one of the first few things that happened um, when I first came out here, I I, I was fortunate enough that um, I had an office. I had this office that I can turn into mm -hmm. an English right. school, and um, and I I decorated the office. I got it ready. But like I was telling you earlier, my biggest problem was trying to get clients to come in. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak a lot of Japanese. There was a lot of cultural differences, and I didn't. I wasn't able to sign up enough kids to support myself. So the first thing I started doing is I got a job through uh, through a family member. Um, my father-in-law um, had me come in, and I worked at uh, on his manufacturing line, and I did manufacturing and engineering for yeah. the first six months here. And we were just working every day, like yeah, every day, so every busy, day, really. six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. If they had a, if they did have a vacation coming up, what they would do is they would work six day work weeks, so that they can have. For example, if they're gonna have Obong have four days off, yeah. then for maybe two months before that, they would do six day work weeks or seven day work weeks to be able to make up the hours for when they took the vacation. Yeah. So essentially, it wasn't really a vacation. They were working. They were producing more so that they can have that time off. Mm -hmm. So it was really fast paced. So I, I definitely didn't like it. And eventually, I told my wife, you know, I can't, this is not what I, you know, I, I came out here to teach English and I have a degree and I feel like I'm wasting my degree yeah. in social science and in psychology in, on a manufacturing line. Like, this was, if I knew this was going to be my future, I wouldn't have come out here. So um, I started looking into, even though I, I made my own English school, I wasn't getting enough clients. So I started, I went online. I uh, did a job search and I ended up working for a big English school in, in the city. Mm -hmm. And um, and I got hired and started working there and I thought things were going to be okay. But really what happened was I adapted the Japanese work schedule and now I was going to the city yeah. every day in, in Kobe. So two hour, two hour different? commute, yeah. working every day, Monday through, I would work six to seven days. I was still working six to seven days. Um, well, because what happened was I would, I, I tried to work six days, five days. I was working every weekend. I was working every night because mm -hmm. that's when people want to learn English in the city. And to get to the city, I, I'd start my shift. I usually worked like from, from about one o'clock, two o'clock to 10 o'clock at night mm -hmm. around there. And then the commute took me two hours. So essentially, um, I would leave the house at 1130. I'd come home at 1130. And that wow. was the, that's that's what I was doing every day for the first year I was here, um, and then I'd have a day off, and then on my day off I was teaching English at my office mm -hmm. to try to get more clients here because I because I just well, what else am I gonna do? So I'd I'd have a day off, and on that day off I was teaching here. So eventually I started trading out the schedule, <laughs> but then around like last year I started working seven days a week because if I wasn't working in Kobe. I was working here, mm -hmm. trying to build my school. Yeah. So I really hustled it out for that last third year, and then finally this year I said, okay, I'm, I'm fucking done. Like, <laughs> yeah. I need, I need at least two days off a week, and I, I started day. taking two days off and sticking to it. I'm not. Those are the two days that I do the podcast. It's, you know, it's fun for me. It's not, I don't view <laughs> yeah. it. I don't view it as work. That but yeah, hard. it was really shocking to me that, like. Still, even though I talked about my work, I couldn't complain about it because everyone that I taught English to was telling me the same schedule. They're like, oh, yeah, I work seven days a week, 50 hours plus. They were like, oh, you're lucky. You know, you, you, you're only working, you're really only working eight hours and doing a two hour commute. It's not like you're working 12 hours and doing a commute because that's what most these people were, most of my clients were doing 16 hour days. Right. So, like, you know, they'd work overtime 12 hours, 14 hours. And they had an hour commute from work. I knew one guy, one of my clients, he worked in Kobe. I'd see him every day on the train with me. And he left way early in the morning. So he'd leave his house at about 6.30 in the morning. And he wouldn't come home till 11.30 at night. So like two hours of commuting to work and then working 12, 15 hours, 16 hours. And then coming home, he had 18 hour days. The wow. guy was just working, 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 working. And I see a lot of that out here. In Kobe? Yeah, in Kobe. In yeah. Kobe? Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. lived out here in, uh, he lives out here, not lived, he lives, he's one of my, I teach his kids English, and he lives, uh, he lives right down the road off of, uh, Koi, Koi Namicho? Koi Namicho, yeah, Koi Namicho. yeah, he lives in Koi Namicho. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
And then at one point he got transferred to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So and he's married, right? But he got transferred to Tokyo for about a year. So for about a year he didn't see his family. He was working in Tokyo. He'd come down for the holidays. Okay. Um, yeah, it's the really biggest problem in Japan. Mm -hmm. no, actually, I have in, in my university, get the university for instance. My university, I have a lot of foreign people, the international student, who yeah, the kind of exchange student. They really want to stay in Japan, but they don't want to work here because they are really impressed. I don't think like the other you told me. So he, in Japan, you have a lot of problem as a job. So we have to work a lot. We have to respect the same bike. We the same bike go high. It's really hard. Yeah, and then like the another thing I need to explain the senpai kohai system uh, the senpai kohai system is, is a Japanese hierarchy system it, it actually comes it dates it dates back again to the to the feudal period mm -hmm. and the, the their military structure of having yeah, of having a senior and subordinate relationship with everyone so whenever they, they brought in this like almost uh, for a Westerner to look at this, uh, they almost like samurai culture <laughs> mentality yeah. has been brought into their business. Um, so, the way it works is the senior representatives um, are have subordinates. So if you if you're new to a company, you're essentially and they'll use the word subordinate. Mm. They're very that's what sem, that's what kohai actually translates to is subordinate. Yeah. yeah. So you're somebody's subordinate, and they're not necessarily this person isn't necessarily your boss. There's just someone who's been at the company longer than you. So, and it doesn't have to be a significantly longer period either. This person can be what? Your, they, your senpai can just be at the company maybe one year before you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's your senpai. Just, yeah. yeah, so essentially anybody who's worked at the company for at least a year is going to be your senpai. Or your, you're going to be their subordinate. And they can essentially... And you have good senpais and bad senpais. Good senpais are more of a mentor and they teach you and they yeah. take care of you and they make sure you know, learn the ropes. Bad senpais, you're pretty much their bitch, and they make you do all kinds of stuff that you don't want to do. Yeah, all right. And um, and if they if they work overtime, you have to work overtime. Yeah, that's what I, that's like. I was talking to my clients, like, yeah, I want to leave work. I finished my work. I'm done. Like, I was given these tasks. I finished my tasks, but my my senpai um, that I'm assigned to, he's staying overtime. And I'm like, well, is it then? Is he asking you to stay overtime? He's like, no, no. But if he stays, I have to stay. Yeah. Like I can't yeah. go home. And I'm like, well, what's he doing? He's just sitting in his office. I'm like, well, well, is he working? He's like, no. <laughs> My senpai is just sitting in his office, like watching videos and goofing off, right. to to gain, to make more money working overtime. He's essentially staying overtime to get paid overtime. And so he's on purpose. He'll he won't finish his work during the eight hours to try to stay a few more hours to get paid more. Yeah. And then the Kohai is stuck there because he's already, he's finished his work, but he can't go back. So, I mean, the system works well if everyone's efficient. Mm -hmm. I, I have seen companies that use the Senpai Kohai system. Like I said, it's more of a mentorship. And But the problem is, are people who aren't efficient, people who are trying to just use a system like that guy mm -hmm. to get paid overtime. And, and, and if you're essentially, you have a bad Senpai, it can really suck. <laughs> yeah, but senpai. Yeah. Yeah, I have that experience. When I was my first year, my university. Actually, do you know <laughs> the Uniqlo? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I worked the Uniqlo more, more than two year, two half a year. Oh. I worked there. But Uniqlo, by the way, is uh, is a uh, department store. It's um, they they make uh, they make all kinds of uh, costume clothes, yeah. um shirts pants affordable shirts it's kind of like it before gap I, I i would compare it to the way america is the way the shirt the shirt the the store gap i would compare it to that mm -hmm. okay. sorry good <laughs> uh yeah so Uniqlo, i i work even though i was the first day in the student i have to i have a lot of class then and the after class after school I went to Uniqlo, the office. I worked a lot, and more than I don't know, I forgot. But I worked a lot, more than five days, four weeks. So 
crazy. So you were working six day work weeks? Yeah. And going to school? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then it happened that before when the, my class, there was second or third class. So maybe that started, it started. PM. So after the in the evening? Yeah, after the evening. I I worked the morning and the lunch time. I worked a lot. And my senpai was crazy. So Your senpai was crazy. 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 <laughs> they order a lot. Oh uh, yeah. So and then um your senpai your senpai would um would give you a lot of tasks I'm guessing you know yes a lot of extra work that wasn't exactly in the job description yes and like they no actually I started I didn't know I didn't know anything but they they bring they brought a lot of tasks to me it's how to say chapa over so yeah, it was really hard so, so pretty much, like, you know, one of the things that happens out here is that they'll, they'll hire you for one job. Let's say they hired you as a clerk. Clerk? Clerk, like you were to work. Were, what was your job? Like when you came to work for Uniqlo, you worked the register? Yeah, register and I fold. And you'd fold clothes. You'd stock, yeah. you'd stock the clothes. Yeah, and I have to say, they're like missing. Missing, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah stocking. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you stock. work stock and you and you and that kind of thing. Yeah, but um, did you end up doing more than just that? Yeah, yeah, like so, like we have to count the how many we have to, so we have to, yes, around the task, the talking with the client and talking customer, and the after the close. Uniqlo that we have to fold a lot of the clothes and we have to count and the even though the whenever if I miss just only one yen each yen I was then my boss he he's angry. Uh, yeah, angry yeah. So after after you counted all the money and, and closed out the register if you were if you were, if there was just one yen you just one yen. one yen up or one yen down yeah have to they write um, a report. Write a report on it. And, you know, I apologize yeah. more than hundred times. You had to apologize <laughs> yeah. about a hundred yeah. times. Yeah. Oh wow. So like yeah, I mean that, that I, I used to work retail a long time ago, and you know we had to do a lot of the same stuff: inventory, stock. But it was it was almost unsaid mm-hmm. that we were always gonna have like one or two cents off. Our rule at the company I wor- worked for was. As long as it's not over five cents, hmm. like if, if it wasn't over five cents up or five cents down, down was always the worst. Like okay. Negative was the worst. But if it was within five cents, that's fine. And like the employees, the employees, we had like a small jar mm-hmm. where we would put our money, like five cents, pennies, one yen, one cent. Yeah. So that if it was, we'd just, <laughs> we, would. we would contribute it into the, into the pot. So it wouldn't be, so it would never be negative. And like, it's, and they always said, we only had to write, a, oh, and we only had to write a formal report if it was like a lot of money. Like if it was like a, like if it was more than a dollar, more than a dollar, which is like, kept being, like if you went over a dollar and if it kept happening, like you get a warning. If you got like a dollar under, like you get warned, you get warned. You're like, Hey, if you do this again, you're going to be in trouble. And then. If it happened the second time, all right, you have to write it up. We have to, you have to write a report. Mm. Um, but uh, and then of course certain ones would be instant. Like if you have, if you're five dollars under, that's when they have to start writing reports. Uh, Go yeah. happy, right? Five dollars, yeah, yeah. and that's a lot of money. It adds up for a company. But um, but you know once we wrote the report, essentially if it wasn't anything that the person was stealing or anything like that, mm. it, we didn't have to you know we apologize, but. It was very je- like you're saying you had to apologize like you had to keep apologizing yeah. up to a hundred times to your senpai to your other senpai to your to, to each person yeah, to each the person boss one by one. one by one they they line you up to apologize yeah. to the whole staff and you just think about the productivity rates like 
the time it takes for this kid to have to apologize to a line of workers. Yeah. Like, what a waste of time. <laughs> I understand apologizing. Fine, apologize. Like, when it would happen to us in retail, we'd apologize to our to our supervisor, the person. They were really sorry that happened. And, okay. All right, whatever. If it's only, whatever, one cent, you know, we'd put it in. Whatever. Yeah. We'd, rep- we'd, we'd do a verbal report and whatever. But, you know, it was, it, like, that's that's just very... That's some of that formality that, like you were saying, that a lot of Westerners, when they when they encounter that kind of structure, are kind of turned off by yeah. wanting to work out here. It's one of the reasons I'll never work for a, for a Japanese We couldn't earn money when we apologize. The more than five, the more than hundred people, they're free. <laughs> to wow. So. Wow. More wow. than a hundred. Apologizing to up to hundred people, that's... So and for mi- one for one cent yeah. <laughs> for a one cent error. <laughs> it's really different the how to work and we have to approach it. We have to apply it. That kind of machine. So we have to memorize a lot of expression. Yeah, the new nuclear law, the um, lot of expression we have to memorize. Mm. So that was the stomach ache before. <laughs> I go Uniqlo the before. Oh, you get stomach aches yeah, before coming yeah, to work. Because you were just, yeah, that, uh, that's a horrible feeling, man. Sounds like a horrible job. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a bad job. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. So when you're when you're done with all with school, when you're done with school, you have to enter the workforce soon. What's what's what 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 kind of job do you want to do? Uh, my major is French, and I I actually I. I'm a student French department in my university, and I study French and English and globalization and business because I'm really interested in. The so business is my private thing, so I the after school, I because my university now I have a class the business class but it's not a lot of so. Uh, so yeah. you're self-studying yes, marketing, I think that's what yes. marketing right? What, um, ideally, what, where do you want to work when you're done with? In the future? In the future, when you're done with all this. What, uh, what do you see yourself doing? So, I, I found my project more bigger. I make my project bigger. In the future, if it was, I would like to make the company. <laughs> You like to make a company. Yeah. So you like to build your own company, bringing um, bringing tourism to yeah to Tajima. Yeah, to Tajima and rural on the countryside. All right. So you kind of expand it and just try to bring more commerce and business to yes. the, to these countryside towns. So I connect the Lidali people, the what's it, the Asian people, and also the localization, the kind of. And I connect, I share the information, I present a lot of information to around the world. Okay, so, so just kind of bring, like I said, bring, bring more tourism to the, yes. to the more unknown spots. And I think that's what, like, I think that's one of the things that hopefully, like, I know right now a lot of the big focus for this Olympics is the 2020 Olympics. Yeah, and they're going to be in Tokyo and they're going to bring a lot of commerce to Tokyo. But um, in my opinion, like... If you're a big city person, great, man. Go to Tokyo. It's an awesome city. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of big city stuff to do. Me, personally, I'm not a big city person. That's why when people ask me, like, do you mind living in the countryside? And I, my honest answer is not at all. Like, <laughs> I love living in the countryside. Yeah. I like working once once a week in the city is good enough for me. Yeah. Kind of sanami, yeah. Yeah, I'll go. I see the city. I work a little bit. I train a little bit. I come home. And mm-hmm. that's... That's fine. Like for me, I don't. I don't need much anything else. But um, but like, uh, definitely for my viewers and listeners, like definitely like, there's a lot of cool places you can check out in Japan outside of these big tourist yes uh, tourist attractions. There's a lot of awesome spots to see in Japan that um that are kind of off off the map, if you will, like Tajima, like Kinosake Onsen, which I feel I've been to Kinosake Onsen. I've also been to what they consider the best onsen in Japan, Arima oh, really? Onsen. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Arima. I actually like Kinosake Onsen more. Yeah. Um, Arima was really one of the cool things about Kinosake Onsen is you pay 1,200 yen, mm-hmm. which is like $12 if you look at it at US standards. And you can visit 
every single hot spring on one ticket. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, you, you pay for, a, for like, a, an all-day pass, and you can visit all these hot springs. Um, now, the cool thing about hot springs, if you don't know, if you've been to a hot spring in the U.S. and you've never been to a hot spring in Japan, it's going to be a really different experience. Um, first of all, you're naked. So, it's kind of like being at the gym. Um, you know, you're going to go into a spa, and you go in, and you're naked. Uh, they say no tattoos, but uh, I have a <laughs> tattoo, and uh, as long as you as long as you don't go waving your tattoo around, they're they're pretty cool about it. They'll let you in. Yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah, but tattoos are pretty different. The Japanese we can, we think the yakuza, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the French people and the French are a lot of people who have uh, the tattoo. It's kind of fashion. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's a fashion. Pretty so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Kinosake Onsen was pretty cool about it. But yeah, out of respect, like if you have if you have your tats, um, what I normally do is when I come in, I cover up my tats as I'm walking into the place, and then once I go to change my clothes, of course, then I'm just whatever. Then it's all good. Mm-hmm. We just out of respect for the patrons that I know there's a lot of conservative people out here that don't like tattoos, so I don't necessarily have my tattoo showing as I walk in. Mm-hmm. And then of course, once I like when I walk into the actual like lobby, if you yeah. will. So like if you have sleeves or whatever, just um you know just kind of cover up a little bit as you come in but once you're in the actual area it's, it's pretty cool um but yeah definitely Kunosake Onsen is a great place I, I think I, I, I love the fact that for 12 bucks you can visit you can visit every single every single hot spring there they also make their own beer, uh, beer. they have a they have a microbrewery there and uh, Kinosake Ale is really good they have an awesome pale ale they also have an oh. awesome Indian, Indian pale ale and they make a really good Belgian no. if you're if you're a beer lover <laughs> Kinosake Onsen is a great spot to check out. Thank you so much. Welcome um, to Kinosake Onsen. Um, we're almost at, we're almost up on our time here, huh? but um, Tatsuki, I want to thank you very much for coming out. Thank you. And doing the interview. Um, one more time, if you want to check out uh, Tatsuki's uh, website or his uh, Facebook page, mm-hmm. he's still you're still building the website. You're not finished. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's at La Sigonye? Sigonye. La Sigonye. <laughs> La Sigonye. At, uh, that's L-A-C-I-G-O-G-N-E mm-hmm. on Facebook. And um, also, uh, as always, uh, if please follow me on Twitter at Social Jello. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Social Jello. Follow me on Snapchat at The Social Jello. And as always, my Facebook page is uh, Social Jello with Angelo. Uh, I still still do have a, f- a little few spots on my uh, personal, on my, uh, my uh, marketing Facebook page at Jello Topics. Um, thanks again for checking out the show. And uh, make it a great week. If you have any ideas, you want to contact me, hit me up on any of the social media outlets. Catch you later.